Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. So today's topic is training, and we're going to cover common training mistakes. So we've talked a little bit about like common mistakes people make before, but I kind of want to revisit them and bring up some new ones and just in general talk about what might be holding you back from reaching your goals. Now, uh, the first training mistake people can make is not to train. <laughs> so we'll assume they're at least exercising, okay, in a regular way. So if you're going to the gym, you're putting in effort, and you're frustrated because that effort isn't equating to the results that you would want. What might be some things that are holding you back? So that's what we're going to kind of review in today's podcast. And then also just bring up some things that maybe you're not even aware of that you're actually doing. So um, we want to bring up mistakes to look for, but then also mistakes that you're going to go, oh, crap, didn't realize I was doing that, but that does make sense. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. The first thing we're going to look at is one of the things that could be holding you back is correct form. So in a recent podcast, we talked about technique being the limiting factor. And that is, in a sense, what we're saying here as well, is not only are you, exer- are you performing the exercise correctly, but do you have the right focus of intent on the exercise? Um, so, for example, we have a past podcast, number 220, titled Muscle Intention versus Movement Intention. So too often, when someone is doing an exercise to try to train a muscle, they are actually just kind of flying through the movement, never really paying attention to whether that muscle is doing its best job. Now, if you ask them, does that muscle hurt? They'll say yes, but they actually are unaware of the fact that it's a pathetic level of hurt and they need to have way more. (laughs) So we're going to talk about this, another concept of hurt here in a second or two. But um, what we're looking for that is a good, healthy hurt, is a deep muscle burn. So we do not want joint pain. That's not what I'm asking you to try to endure. But what you should try to endure is, can I feel the exact muscle I want to work? And can I make that muscle endure as much like burning pain and stay as focused into the movement as possible? So rather than like squirming around and moving around and, you know, making faces and doing all the stupid shit to try to get away from the, the, the pressure of the exercise, okay, can we stay calm and soak in that pressure? Can we soak in the discomfort? Can we soak in the pain? And the reason why is we're there to challenge our current body and force it to become better. So if you're training a specific muscle for an exercise, The point of what you're doing it all for is to show the body that that muscle is not developed in the way in which we'd like it. So if we do heavy weight for short time under tension, that'll help develop strength. If we do kind of still heavy-ish weight for medium time under tension, that'll develop muscle tissue if we're eating in excess. Or it'll just give you a nice kind of better shape and more toned, tighter muscle kind of feel. Um, there's an asterisk to everything I just said there. But in general, <laughs> um, with, if we're eating in a caloric control, okay? And then if we do it under a long time under tension, it gives us muscular endurance. So what outcome, adaptation outcome we want is decided by how we train. But... The degree in which we get that adaptation is decided by how intensely we train. So you can't come into the gym, piss around and do some things that are kind of sort of maybe uncomfortable, and then expect to get the best of the best results. So you actually have to soak in some pain and really challenge your current body in whatever the task is that you're asking it to do. And the task would be represented by exercise. So when you're doing an exercise... Again, with the intent of focusing on a muscle, are you actually paying attention to what that muscle is doing, or are you just trying to get to your rep count? I just need to get to 10 reps so I can be done. That ain't going to help anything. Okay? If you just try to just blow through the training and you give it a half-ass effort, you're going to get half-ass results or no results. Okay? So in a quote I read recently that stated, use your whole ass. (laughs) Okay, so don't half-ass your training. Use your whole ass, okay? (laughs) That's what you want to do. So in that podcast 220, we talk about the concept of certain movements should be treated as movements. 
So if I'm trying to do a, a bench press for strength, squat or deadlift for strength, or an explosive like Olympic lift and stuff like that, you're going to have a sequence of muscular kind of uh, tasks. But in general, you're focusing on the movement, the quality of the movement. So you're not trying to necessarily focus on an individual singular muscle like you would do, be doing with, say, bicep curls or chest flies. So bodybuilders tend to focus more on muscle intention, or at least they should, whereas strength and explosive style athletes tend to focus more on movement. Now, neither one is the wrong focus if you're doing it for the right sport. But if you're a bodybuilder just trying to plow through things, or you're a strength athlete trying to feel every little nuance of a muscle, you're not going to get the right results because you're focusing with the wrong kind of focus. Okay? So... That's the first thing people tend to mess up, is they're in the gym, they're going through the motions, but they're treating it exactly like that. They're just going through the motions. They're truly not trying to maximize the efficiency of each movement. So I actually see this all damn day when I'm in the gym, which is sad because it's in my gym. <laughs> so I'd love to correct this as much as I could. Um, and maybe this will be an awareness for the people who do listen to this podcast. But... I watch people go through and they'll get to 10 and they'll stop when they could have done, I mean, gosh, 12, 14, 16. You know, they could have kept going. They just stopped because they reached the number. Was it uncomfortable to them? Probably, but maybe like a 7 out of 10 and uncomfortable. We need to be soaking in those 9s and 10s out of 10s uncomfortable. And they need to be crisper with their movements. So you'll watch them just kind of hee-haw through it, kind of, you know, moving this way, moving that way, blah, blah, blah. But they're not pinpointed in the accuracy of their movement. They're really, truly not trying to fine-tune and perfect it. And that's what's holding them back, okay? So you can listen to Podcast 220, and that'll teach you more about muscle intention versus movement intention. There's um, tons of tutorial videos on how to perform exercises on YouTube. Unfortunately, some of them are pretty crappy, um, but there are some good ones. We even have some on our channel, so Brutal Iron Gym on YouTube. And then one of my favorite books for technique is called Strength Training Anatomy Workout 2 by Frederick Delavere. Okay, D-E-L-A-V-I-E-R, Delavere. I think that's how you pronounce it, or at least that's how I'm saying it. And again, the title is Strength Training Anatomy Workout 2. So that's a written book you can actually look through, see pictures, see written descriptions. If you're a visual learner in terms of like movement, then maybe YouTube videos will work better for you. But you should invest some effort into not only just figuring out what the movement is, but how to do it best. Okay. Now, the other thing tied in with correct form is finding the correct form for your body type. So unfortunately, I see a lot of people in strength movements moving in ways that do not match their body type at all. So they'll, they'll have their feet too wide on a squat, and they're overusing their hip sockets rather than using muscular tension. Or they'll have their feet too narrow, and they're kind of dumping forward over top their toes, and they're going to complain about their lower back hurting. They're going to get folded forward when they squat. There's a lot of mechanics that will go wrong with a stance too narrow, just as there are with a stance too wide for that person. Same thing as head positioning in the deadlift. So, oh, good God, I see this way too often, is people will do a conventional deadlift, they'll have their eyes and chin kind of parallel with the floor. Okay? And what that ends up doing is, it, in a sense, is if they were to stand up making that same head angle, they'd be staring at the ceiling pretty much. So by having their chin and their eyes up, it's actually causing their upper back to be rounded forward, their lower back to be rounded. And when they go to drive the bar off the floor, it goes right into the lower back. They're going to straight leg the lift before they actually actually drive through the legs. So basically the bar leaves the floor, they kick forward into like a stiff leg deadlift variation, then they lift it through their lower back, and then they wonder why their lower back hurts. Because your damn head is up and you're in the wrong position. Whereas if they bring their eyes and chin down, where the back of their head line matches their neck, that's going to allow them to pull their chin back, like they're creating like a sexy double chin. <laughs> okay, And that's going to flatten out uh, the upper and lower back and put them in a much, much, much stronger and safer position to where they can actually push through their legs and keep the tension in their thighs and glutes, not all in their lower back. So you see this all the time. People like get to the top of a conventional deadlift and they'll shove their belly forward, like 
like actually loose. They're just pushing it forward, and which is causing them to contract the lower back. And it's just sad because you can tell they're in pain, and, and unfortunately they don't know it, but you can see them lifting weights that are pathetically lighter than what they really should be able to, but they're struggling with them. And feel bad for them because they don't know any better, but they're also not actively going out and seeking to know any better. So it's kind of like a, you feel bad for them, but they're also bringing it on themselves kind of thing. So trying to find technique that matches your body type, is that easy to do? Yes and no. So no, it's not easy in the sense that it doesn't come automatic. But yes, it is easy in the sense that there's 40 bajillion videos nowadays on YouTube on how to squat, bench, and deadlift. So if those are the big lifts you do, and you're having neck pain or back pain or hip pain or elbow pain or shoulder pain, you sh your joints should not hurt. Okay? If you do strength training, your joints should not hurt. Okay? I'm letting that sink in here a little bit. There is absolutely no reason why your hips should hurt after squatting. Okay, with the only exception of this being like if you're working on fixing an old injury and you're retraining movement mechanics. But um, if you have a relatively healthy body, lifting heavy, for example, doing powerlifting, should not ruin your body. It should actually improve and build upon your health. So I've taken clients who've had physical injuries where they've torn muscles, okay, and had significant injuries, and we've, we've used powerlifting to make them tons stronger than before they were ever injured and they're actually pain free except for the occasional like acute little annoyance here and there but they're not dealing with chronic hip pain or chronic elbow pain or chronic shoulder pain or their lower back doesn't hurt every time they deadlift or squat so none of the joint pain is normal so if you have someone who's coaching you and you're following their programming but it's causing your joints to hurt fire that coach okay i coach people by the way and I'm okay with saying that. If I was coaching someone and their health was worse off from me helping them with programming, okay? We're getting ready for a powerlifting meet, for example, and they feel like absolute crap and they feel worse in their health by the time they get to the meet, I was not a good coach for them. They should fire me, okay? So you have to find what matches your body type. So what I did when I was learning this was I went on YouTube I watched like how to squat videos, how to deadlift videos, how to bench videos. I found people of similar body types to me. I mimicked what they did, and I tried three or four people. I found out the commonalities, found different positions that I liked. I tried and experimented with different things. Now, how long should you experiment with something for? If it causes immediate joint pain, stop that workout. Okay? If it feels okay joint pain-wise... You don't really have any joint pain. It just feels kind of odd or different for you. Well, give it a couple workouts. But if it's not feeling kind of smoother and more efficient, then you definitely want to get rid of that form and try something else. So proper form, when it comes to lifting, should make things feel more efficient. It should feel like, wow, that might have taken me a lot of work to get tight, to get into a good position. But once I was in position, I could almost barely feel the weight. And that's what you look for, okay? Where you do a squat and your lower back doesn't hurt. You do a squat and your knee doesn't hurt or your hip doesn't hurt. You do a deadlift and your lower back doesn't hurt. You do a bench press and all of a sudden your shoulders and elbows don't hurt. That's what you're looking to find, okay? Healthy positions. So you have to kind of watch videos, experiment with people of similar body types, and then practice it and find what works best for you. So those are the first things to look for. Okay, number one was kind of uh, correct form in a sense of like muscle intention versus movement intention. So if you're doing an exercise to target a muscle, you should feel the muscle, kind of soak in the pain of the muscle, and really make that muscle work. Don't run away from it. Okay? If you're doing a movement, then yes, you want to focus on efficiency of the movement. So you need to know which is your focus intent for the exercise you're doing. Then we have body type. So you need to lift specific to your body type. The best way to do that is to find a bunch of videos, practice people's different positions, and see what feels best for you. Okay? The last thing we'll kind of add in, like for the actual training kind of stuff, is understanding time under tension in, in order to match the results that you want. So if you're doing something to get bigger muscles, 
it needs to be done for 20 to 40-ish, maybe up to 60 seconds at most, but I would argue maybe 20 to 40 seconds of time or attention being the most effective range. If you're doing something for 10 seconds or less, that's not really building muscle, okay? You're more so just displaying strength. If you're doing something 10 to 20 seconds, that's actually building strength. Doing something over 60 actually builds endurance. So understanding these time under tension ranges are extremely important because people will do the wrong things. So you'll see somebody doing an exercise and you'll be like, why are you doing that? Oh, I want to get a bigger chest. And they're doing like three reps. That ain't going to build muscle. Okay. Likewise, you ask somebody like, oh, what are you doing that for? And they're like, oh, I want to get, you know, more rounded, nice shoulders. And they're using like three pound dumbbells and doing like sets of 20 reps. And nothing is remotely heavy enough to actually be of any use for them. So there are different ways to train depending on your strength level. Okay. And I'm trying to look up that podcast right now. But if you are very strong... Okay, um, there is a different way to train than if you're very weak. So it was podcast 383, titled How Your Strength Affects How You Should Train. So if you're doing lateral raises with three-pound dumbbells, there's probably no point in doing that. You're better off doing a heavier exercise like an overhead press to target your shoulders, rather than light piddly stuff that ain't going to actually challenge the muscle. Likewise, if you're a pretty strong dude or girl, and you want to get stronger, you can't just train like a psychopath every time you come into the gym and beat the living shit out of your body. You have to find ways to do what's called pre-exhaust, where you train with lighter weights but make them feel hard by the way you organize your workouts. So, in podcast 383, it discusses more about that, how your strength affects how you should train. So that is very helpful to know, to make sure you're not wasting time with stupidly light things, or you're not like hurting yourself by doing stupidly heavy things all the time. Okay? So those are kind of the big mistakes in training that I see people make all the time. Is they're just going through the motions rather than focusing on the intent of the exercise. They're using positions that are not correct for their body type. And then they're feeling beat up all the time and they're just under efficiently using their strength. So you see someone struggling to deadlift 275 when if they were in the right position they would be smoking 300 pounds. So... This is sad to see, but people do this all the time. And then you see people training incorrectly for their time under tension ranges and strength ranges. So we need to understand all that stuff. So the understanding like time under tension and stuff is podcast 214. Okay, it's titled Understanding Rep Ranges and Expected Results. So you definitely need to know what your rep ranges and time under tension should be for the results that you want to get out of each exercise that you do. So you need to be aware of what are the correct time under tension ranges. Okay? Then podcast 383 will help you figure out how you should use those ranges and how you should organize your workout depending on your strength levels. Okay. Now the next thing we want to talk about is mindset. So that's the other mistake people make all the time in training is they don't come in accepting the fact that their workout should be a challenge. What a workout is, is it represents a challenge to your current body. And then hopefully due to the difficulty of that challenge, your body will make adaptations and become better. But your old body will not become a new body. Nothing will get better if there isn't a forced need to get better. So if you come in and you're bitching and whining already during your warm-ups, you've already lost a day, you might as well freaking go home. That's ridiculous. The whole point of you walking through the door is to say, I'm here, and I'm ready to force my body to change. I am ready to earn the results that I want. I'm here to put in work. So if you come through that door and you don't have that mindset, you've already lost. You better step back outside, get that mindset, and step back in. Okay? But workouts are challenges. They can still be fun. You can still be social if you like social. Okay? You can still enjoy the workout. You can still talk to people. You can still listen to good music. You can listen to a good podcast, whatever the hell you listen to while you work out. You can pick exercises that you enjoy. Okay, that's fine too. But things have to be a challenge. Things have to be difficult to your current body. So it will create a new body. Okay? So 
you need to make sure that the workout you're doing is, is first of all, with a mindset of it wanting to be a challenge. You have to approach your workouts as challenges and understand that and actually strive for it. How you make sure it stays a challenge is paying attention to that muscle versus, muscle versus movement intention. So when you're doing an exercise, you're doing it to just get through it, or you're doing it to actually challenge the body and see how much of a challenge your body can soak in. That's the first thing. Next thing is paying attention to your rest periods. Too often people just bullshit, and God knows how long they take during the rest periods, and they're absolutely wasting results. Okay, When you take too long of rest periods, you're getting no endurance factors. You're getting really significant missed factors of cardiovascular health, fat lo fat loss, and other aspects. So when we think about muscle damage even, okay, to build muscle, that comes from heavy shearing force on the muscles, where something's so heavy it tears the muscle apart, okay, in a good way. These are micro tears. Um, or, and the other way the muscles grow is through metabolic stress, meaning that the workload you're asking it to do and the time frame you're asking it to do it in, the body can barely keep up. So if you're taking too long of rests, you're missing out on that second form of growth completely. And therefore, you have to rely solely on things being very heavy in order for you to get muscle damage, but with that comes joint damage. And then with that comes, oh, my elbow hurts, my knee hurts, my back hurts. So not paying attention to rest periods has cascading effects that can lead to joint pain. Likewise, if you take too short of rest periods, okay, and you end up doing everything super duper light because you're going a million miles an hour, you're never going to develop any strength. And strength has enormous benefits, ridiculous amount of benefits, okay, towards overall health, bone health, um, fighting arthritis, osteoporosis, uh, it helps with cardiovascular health, helps with a whole bunch of other crazy things. So uh, lots and lots and lots of benefits to being strong, okay? So if you're taking too short of rest and everything you're doing is really light in a million reps, you're never going to get stronger. You're missing on strength. Gosh, you're there. You're already there. You're already putting in the effort. Why not put in the effort the right way? Okay? So the last thing we'll look at is not having the proper nutritional support. So if you're exercising to try to lose fat, overwhelmingly too often people eat too little. So they eat too little of calories. Okay, and we talked about this in a recent podcast, number 426, titled Why Eating Less Isn't Good for Fat Loss. Okay, and they're not paying attention to the big picture details. So they're not making sure that they're paying attention to the things that matter the most. And we talk about that in podcast 41, titled Diet Right, What Matters Most. So instead of paying attention to the exact calories they're supposed to eat, instead of paying attention to protein, instead of paying attention to their meal timing, which are the most important, the first three most important components of healthy eating, whether it's for fat loss, muscle gain, performance, whatever, okay? Those are the three most important things, is calories, protein content, and meal timing. But instead of that, they focus on whether something's organic or not, whether something's white or wheat. And, oh, so stupid, so stupid to put your focus on things that have the least effects. So you're giving 100% focus to something that only contributes like 20%. That's pretty stupid. And especially if you've been listening to these podcasts for a while, I've already told you that many times over, okay, on what's the most important stuff to focus on. And if you're not listening to this because you're stubborn and you just want to do it your way, you're going to sit in kind of results purgatory forever. You're never going to reach the true results that you want because you're never going to truly commit to doing it the right way. And that's sad, Okay. So make sure you have proper nutritional support. Go listen to Podcast 41. Find out what truly does matter most. If you're arguing with me about, like, I have to have lower calories, how can I possibly lose weight if I don't have lower calories? Go listen to Podcast 426, titled Why Eating Less Isn't Good for Fat Loss. It explains the answer. Okay? So rather than just arguing that you're right, go find out if you're right. Okay? So what about muscle gain? People want to build muscle common mistake they're making nutritionally is they're not eating correct amounts in correct timing so that way they have a low level surplus throughout the day where they're constantly able to build muscle but not gaining unnecessary body fat. 
Most often what they're actually doing is eating two to three really large meals a day and then skipping a bunch of food in between that. So they're having big peaks and valleys in their food, which is going to cause them to miss out on, on truest muscle gain potential, and it's also going to cause them to gain unwanted body fat. So a good resource to check out is Championship Bodybuilding by Chris Aceto. And go check out, that's a book by the way, Championship Bodybuilding by Chris Aceto. And podcast 241, titled Nutrition Concepts for Aesthetic Athletes. Both those books will tell you the science of how to eat to maximize muscle but minimize fat gains. What about performance athletes? Okay, So one of the issues that they make uh, mess up is eating specifically the meal time needed for best performance. For them to get their peak results in training, they have to perform to their very best in training. So they don't pay attention to meal timing, they're never going to perform their best. So a great book for that is Nutrient Timing by John Ivey. And a great podcast for that is number 237, titled Nutrition Concepts for Strength Athletes. And that's still for performance athletes as well. So those are the big mistakes people are making. Is they're not paying attention to their correct form and training. They're not paying attention to whether they're doing like what muscles are doing what. They're just trying to get through the exercise, get to their rep count, and that's it. Ugh. Okay, not going to get you what you want. And they're not using the right form for their body type. So when they're doing their big heavy movements, they're not in the correct positions for their levers and their bone lengths, torso lengths, and all that stuff. And it can lead to a lot of joint pain. So they have to find out how to get into better positions where they can alleviate joint pain and change it to muscle strain. You want your muscles doing the lifting, not your joints. Okay? And then... Understanding proper time under tension ranges for the results they want. So again, that was podcast 214 would tell you the right rep ranges for the results that you even would love to get from your training, but you're not getting it. The other thing was the mindset. Again, coming in and bitching and whining during warm-ups, which is stupid. So you're here for a challenge. You're here to make results. And the only way to make that happen is to force the current body into an uncomfortable place to where it'll make changes to become more comfortable in the future when presented with the same stress and same challenge. So you have to be ready for the challenge of the workout. You have to be ready to even approach workouts as challenges. So that way you can get the best results. Okay? And the last thing was the nutrition support. Make sure you're eating correctly for the results you would like to get. And again, how do you know if you're doing any of these things wrong? Number one is if you're coming to the gym... You're putting in effort, but you're not getting the results you'd like to see. Then chances are, it's kind of, is pretty common sense, is if what I'm doing isn't leading where I want, what I'm doing must be wrong in order to get where I want. So go find out what you could possibly be doing wrong. If you're not paying attention to nutrition and you're just going to the gym and trying to crush it, that's a huge, huge mistake. You must pay attention to your nutrition. If you're paying attention to every nuance of nutrition, okay, and you are in the gym and you are working out hard, but you're still not getting results, then the problem could be in either area, but often the problem is in training, and you're not training the correct ways. You're not training with muscle tension versus movement tension or vice versa, and you're not picking the right exercises with the right time and attention ranges for what results you'd like to get, okay? And you're not training to your strength level, your strength ability. So again, that was podcast 383 that told us how you should train for your strength. So you might be doing a lot of stuff, but you're doing a lot of lightweighted, meaningless stuff. Okay? So hopefully this rose some awareness, gave you some things to think about. Uh, if you have not gone and checked out some of these past podcasts that I've referenced, definitely go look at them. They're great resources. And then go check out those books that we said. So Strength Training Anatomy Workout 2 by Frederick Delavere, which is great for technique of exercises. We talked about the book Championship Bodybuilding by Chris Aceto, which is good for aesthetic nutrition. And Nutrient Timing by John Ivey, which is great for performance nutrition. So if you've not read any of those, go buy them, go read them. They're well worth the money, okay? So put some investment into what you're currently doing. So that way what you're currently doing will get you where you want to go. Stop wasting time, okay? Stop wasting efforts. Make sure your efforts count. Cool. Now, if you have any questions or you need any help to kind of get you going in the right direction, email us. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. We are always happy to help, okay? So if you're having trouble figuring it out, 
email us and we'll help you. Okay? Cool. If you like the podcast, please share it with family and friends. The more people we help, the happier the world will be. Also, if you like this information, you can find more from us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Brutal Iron Gym. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. The podcast is for you, so we want to know what you want to learn about. You can tell us at our email, brutalirongym at gmail.com. Cool. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening. And thank you for watching.